Hi everybody. Hello there. I'm Jerry. And I'm Linda. And this is Gizmo. We're the Village's Newcomers, bringing you news and events from Florida's friendliest hometown. Every week seems like it's a busy week, mm -hmm. but it's good. It is good. We sure would like for you to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so. Please press that button. Yeah, we're going to show you in today's show a little Tai Chi action up at uh, Sumter Landing. Ooh. And we're going to give you a weather report. How do you fight the elements in your golf cart? We had a question about that. Mm -hmm. We're also going to show you our latest uh, bill. People are asking about how is it comparing. Yeah, we're going to show you some of our expenses. And a viewer wins big on The Price is Right. I know. All that and more. Hit it, Wally. Send us your questions. We've got your answers. Jerry and Linda's Mailbag Monday. We did something new this last week, and a lot of you that are faithful viewers, you know, we, we did a premiere on Thursday night. I, I think it went over great, but I put it on at 8 p.m. Now, 8 p.m. for our target audience, our people, <laughs> our peeps. Our peeps. You know, you're between 60 and 70 years old. <laughs> we have a few viewers uh, less, some of our best viewers are less, but that's late. Eight o'clock is late if you're watching an hour show or 45 minute show. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to reach out to all of you and ask you, if we went with a premiere again, what time of day would you like it? I know 7 a.m. is too early. That's when we air most of our shows. Right. It's too early for a premiere, but what time? So in your comments, if you don't mind, let us know what you'd prefer. Jerry, how about a weather report? All right. When people talk Florida, you instantly think warm, warm climate, mm -hmm. sun, mm -hmm. hot, uh -huh. beautiful. And it is much of the year. This week, though, we've had some cooler temperatures. Yeah. If you look at that screen, I'm going to show you some. Look at that around the state. And you know what they say about Florida. Your blood done thin. When you get down here, your <laughs> blood gets thin. And then when it gets to be 60, and you'd be throwing a party up in Minnesota, we're down here going, whoa. whoa. Yeah, I'm out with my jacket in the morning, my hood up on my head, and my fingers in my pocket. Yeah, it's, it's cold in the morning here now. We're going to talk about that in regard to golf carts here in just a minute. But if you're wondering how the temperatures are around the state, I'll show you a few. In North Florida on Friday of this last week, mm -hmm. it was 38 degrees in Gainesville. Oh, wow. <laughs> 34 in Tallahassee. That's cold. Mm -hmm. Jacksonville, 40. Now you get down to Central Florida, that's the Disney area. Right. 47 degrees was the low. Not too bad, but still, you, I doubt you want to go swimming at 47. Yeah. The West Coast, Tampa Bay, 50 degrees. Sanibel, now Sanibel, of course, hit hard by that hurricane, yes. Yes. but it's a tourist destination. And people go down there to get warm and go to the beach and yeah. pick up shells and have right. a good time. 60 degrees. <laughs> that's not exactly frolic on the beach weather right there. No. But South Florida, if you go all the way down to Miami, Fort Lauderdale, that area, 70 degrees. So you're getting better. Yeah. But still, if you think Florida is always 85, 90 degrees, no, it is not. Yeah, it's time for me to look for those wetsuits for my water aerobics class because uh, that pool water is at 83 degrees or so. But when you get out, it's going to be chilly. And you, we, I need uh, a little bit more protection. <laughs> So. I am different. I, I am like, I'm a, a huge 240 pound sissy when it comes to getting in that cold water. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you go to the pool, man, even when it's 85 or 88 degrees out and you stick your foot in that water, it's like, ooh, you know, to me it's cold. Yeah. But other people are just jumping in and playing. I mean, my heart feels like it's going to stop. I get in that water and I go straight down to my neck. The other ladies in the water aerobic class, they're, they're just creeping in, they're creeping in, and they're creeping. I'm going, oh, you're taking forever. Get in there. That's, that's me right there. Get in you know, there. they say jump right in. Push. That's what you have to do. <laughs> yeah. But it's not pleasant. <laughs> I, we bought wetsuits because mm -hmm. oh, I, I, I want to swim with the manatees. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'll probably be confused with one when I'm doing it. <laughs> But I bought a triple X and that thing, I was like a sausage. Mm -hmm. 
it, they're too, too t- I need to uh, I need to get one that fits me. But she wants one to I wear do. to water aerobics. I do. And I don't want one so thick that you can't move your arms, that neoprene, whatever, that's like that. You know, like you're the underwater old guys in those little big tanks. But I want something that's going to be movable so I can do my thing. Yeah, we're, we're, we're wearing our uh, Notre Dame stuff today. Did you notice? Uh, yeah. Huh? Yep. Uh, yep. It's been an up and down year. This coming week, we play Southern Cal. May not be able to wear it after that. I don't know. So we'll see. Last week, we told you about one of our viewers right here in the village of Dunedin. CJ was her name. She was on The Price is Right. We don't know how that went yet. But another viewer saw that and sent in her experience. I'm going to read that to you. Sandra wrote in and told us about her experience. She said she was on The Price is Right July 2nd of 1976. Oh, wow. And they're playing it on the game show network. Or she had a link to it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I watched it, and you can see her on your screen there. She said her kids always wanted to see their mom when she was young. And uh, oh. there she is. Now her name's Sandra, and we've asked her to send us a current picture. I always love to see those pictures of people back then oh, and, and now and see how they've changed. <laughs> That's and, right. and whether you can still recognize them. Mm-hmm. You know, we, uh, I think we had, what was that reunion that my high school had recently? Um, 49. 49. 49th reunion. Uh-huh. And, and and some of those people are hard to recognize. <laughs> Oopsie. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Who are you now? We all, we all change. And uh, it's, <laughs> it's funny. But anyway, we'll bring you that if she gets back to us. But she got on there and uh, she spun the wheel and she guessed the product. She won an awesome dune buggy. In 1976. Oh, I saw her husband in the audience, and he was just so excited and screaming. I hope they had a good time on that. We'll tell you more on that when we find out. (laughs) Yeah. Thank you all so much for the faithful viewers. And we're sending in um, donations for our channel. We certainly do appreciate that. And you'll see that scrolling above our heads right there. Yeah, that's our equipment fund. And as we Mm -hmm. sat down today to get ready for you, what happened? What? (laughs) What happened with equipment? Oh, yes, our light went out. We now have a new light over here, a replacement for right now. She's got the ring light. It's a beauty light. Can you see? Is it working? It's supposed to show. I don't have a beauty light. (laughs) She probably has little round circles in her eyes. Can you see them? I don't know. But, yeah, so we're using that right now, but it it wouldn't even come on. Yeah, thank all you folks. Mm -hmm. That helps us, uh, you know, keep it like we want it, you know, give you a good product. Sure. We went to a show at the Savannah Center. You know, we used to do that a lot before COVID. We got out of the habit, but now we've been doing it more. We absolutely love it. This one is called Broadway Showstoppers. All those uh, famous tunes, Memory. It's great. Uh, The the Village's Entertainment really uh, has more for you than any, any other place I can think of. It is. It is and, wonderful. And, you know, we we tell you when we go to shows, they've got the uh, tree lightings coming up. There are three yes. of them where you mm-hmm. can go to the big uh, celebration of Christmas and they'll light the trees in the town squares and that's going to be fun. And There's always something happening in the villages at town squares or at the restaurants. There's a live music at some of the uh, country clubs. And then you have... Of course, the Savannah Center, the Sharon, and the Tierra del Sol. There's just something going on all the time. A lot of, a lot of big names are coming, but Herman's Hermits are coming on Jan- yeah. in January, yeah. and uh, we got to go see that one too. We do, we do. Let's get to our shout outs. Jan and Sally are farmers from North Dakota, and they had a lifestyle visit, and they had a lot of fun. They are cattle ranchers. Okay. They they have thousands of acres up there. Yeah. Good old hardworking Americans. Yeah. I love it. And this is Paul. He's uh, admiring the beautiful sky here in Central Florida. Him and his wife, Roxy, moved here from California. They had a rocky road to get here, but it's all behind them. And now they're settling in and living the good life. We're so glad you're here, finally. This is Will and Dr. Melody Davis from Rochester, New York. And Will's an Air Force veteran and Melody's a high school principal. And in about 20 months, they hope to call the villages their home. They said they've been here five times. So you know what you're getting into. That's true. This is Al and Pam. They're from Memphis, Tennessee. They own a home here in Pine Ridge, Mm -hmm. but they don't live here full time because they're still working. Mm -hmm. It's with all these people working. I don't know that. (laughs) But they hope to be here in a few years. Check out this picture of Al. 
He's with Arnold Schwarzenegger smoking a cigar. They're buddies. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That's incredible. And he gave me this shirt. Look at this shirt in the picture. I'm on Team Al now. Um, me too. Me too. This is Steve and Robin Brady, and they're with their sales agent, Jessica, and they bought a new home in Deluna. They're still working, but they'll be here soon. Yeah, congratulations on the house, not on the working thing. <laughs> this is Bill and Paula. They're fellow Notre Dame Fighting Irish fans from Indiana. <laughs> they recently finished a lifestyle visit, and they say that they'll be back soon. This is Laura and Tim from Rhode Island. They just finished a lifestyle visit, and you can see them standing in front of one of the trolleys. That's a fun thing to do, go on that trolley ride and get that tour. And they highly recommend it, too. Yeah, we took it. We've only taken one of the three tours. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if there are even three tours anymore. There were three. I don't know. And remember, we had a tour guide, Walt. Oh, yes. Walt was 84 years old. I wonder if he's still giving tours. Hope oh, so. Oh, yeah. Scott and Georgette recently came. They were on their second lifestyle visit, and then they went home to Chile, Chile, Wisconsin. Oh, yeah. Scott's a pilot, and Georgette is a nurse. And that photo was taken at McGrady's Pub in Sawgrass. I jumped my gun. I jumped again. I do. I like it busy. <laughs> I'm going to say a bad word. What, what do you have to tell us today? Okay. Hard <laughs> <laughs> for you to say. Easy um, for you to say. <laughs> all our lights out. Well, sorry about that. <laughs> I don't God. know what's wrong. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. the magic of television. <laughs> Why are you laughing? How's it look? It look all right? It's hard to tell with all these lights. I know. That... It's not easy today. I wonder what you're doing. Okay. <sighs> now it's time for View of the Week. And our viewer of the week this week is Susan Gilpatrick. Susan was a neighbor of ours here in Dunedin. Mm -hmm. She comes from Memphis, Tennessee, another Memphis, in Tennessee yeah. connection. Super nice lady. Uh, however, she didn't want to live near us, so she <laughs> sold that house and moved <laughs> down to St. Or actually Bradford, right on the border of Bradford and St. Catherine. She's got a beautiful home down there. Her, her when, and her puppy. When we cause her some problems or something. Yeah. She wanted to get out of here when she found out she moved real close to us. Got a letter that says, we have mailbag Monday question for our new home. We were at Home Depot for the early Black Friday sales, buying a washer, a gas dryer, and a counter depth refrigerator. Please don't ask me while I'm replacing a perfectly good stainless steel refrigerator. <laughs> but if you're familiar with the saying, if mama ain't happy, nobody's happy. That's the reason. I want to be happy. That's right. <laughs> well, that's very common. Yeah. When homes are built here in the villages, you get a standard grade. It could be a Whirlpool or a Samsung mm -hmm. washer, uh, stove, mm -hmm. dishwasher. Right and you may want to upgrade. Lots of people do upgrade. Mm -hmm. Our home still has the basics in it. It's, it's just fine. But some people do that, and you know it seems frivolous, doesn't it, too? But you gotta be happy. The yeah. ice maker on the refrigerator we got, yeah. it makes me want to throw the whole unit out yeah. sometimes. I do miss my, home, my oven from back home. Yeah. We had a double oven, a small one at the top where I could do cookies, or I, used, I, baked, I baked in it cookies. all the time and didn't use the lower big one for the turkey at Thanksgiving. So I used the small area uh, top stove, and I love that thing. This is from Steve and Robin. What can you tell us about the plastic push-pull water shutoff valves? Should we get them replaced? If so, do you have a plumber recommendation? We hear people comment about the construction in the villages all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, any criticisms generally come from people that don't live here. But when, I know when we got here, I looked at things compared to our old homes. We built two homes back in Indiana. Mm -hmm. One of them we built in 1982. Right. And we loved yeah. it. Yeah. 
but it wasn't in an area that we loved. Kind of like Susan Gilpatrick. So we moved and bought a lot, and built a new house, and we thought we built the latest and greatest everything. But we got here and we found out things have improved over the last 30 years. So you've got different kinds of valves and, you know, like the, the uh, system behind the washer and dryer is different. Right. But look here behind the toilet, you'll see the water shut off. Now you have those also under the kitchen sink. They're, they're round knobs and you push them and pull them to turn the water on and off, the water supply on and off. And it feels to me like it's going to break. I have to pull it really hard and yeah. pop, it yeah. pops. I don't like it. Some people think they're great. But a lot of people go with a little switch that has a handle that you can actually turn a handle up and shut off your water. Mm -hmm. So I don't know whether you should replace them or not. I'd like to replace ours. Mm -hmm. Hi, Jerry and Linda. I have a question for you. I walk my little dog on several walking paths around the villages, especially the hog eye path. My dogs are seniors and hard of hearing. They cannot hear bicycles coming up behind us, and many times I can't either. I see an accident happening. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. Now, bicycles are allowed on just about all the paths. Mm -hmm. You can ride a bicycle. You can't ride golf carts on all the paths. The ones, the paths that have one stanchion, she likes that word. That's a new word for me. It has a wide <laughs> area on each side you can drive golf carts by. You can go on those. But some of them have two stanchions, and those are for walkers, bikers, dog walkers only. Mm -hmm. But she's afraid because those bikes are quiet, aren't they? Yeah. And they come up. We highly encourage every bike rider to have a bell. Yes. Ring that bell when you're a safe distance away so people can know that you're coming. Because right. a little dog can dart out or people can move and boom, you have an accident. Right. It wouldn't be so good for the biker or the walker. Yeah. And, and that's another reason that people question electric golf carts. Yeah. Because when you're walking, those electric carts come up, you don't know they're behind you, you until they them. get there. Yeah. But you know, that brings up another thought for me. Every once in a while, I'll be driving down the, the multimodal, and I'll see a bicycle rider on the sidewalk. Yeah. And well, I always thought that was against the law, but it's not. Okay. You can ride the bike on the sidewalk, but I don't think it's good because the walkers are on the sidewalk. Yeah. There's a perfectly good <laughs> lane right out there to ride your bike in. Why are you riding it on the sidewalk? Do you feel safer up there? Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think that's a good place to ride a, a bicycle. Anyway, I'm probably wrong, and I'll probably get some... <laughs> some uh, mail on that. Yeah, I'll get some comments, but, you know. <laughs> Susan in New York writes, Many pre-owned homes for sale in the villages south of 44, where most of the houses are only one to two years old. Do you think the homeowners underestimated the noise generated by the turnpike, mm -hmm. or are they just trying to make a killing while they can? Some are asking nearly double what they paid. Well, I think that's probably the big reason that right now real estate has boomed. Uh, sale prices are inflated, so you can make a nice profit. Of course, when you make that profit, you got to move somewhere and then you got to spend that profit. That's right. So uh, I don't know. Uh, as far as noise down there, I wouldn't like it. I wouldn't like the turnpike noise. We lived on I-64 back in Indiana. You remember that? I do. Remember that house I told you that we only lived in for uh, two and a half years? Yeah. It's because we had six acres, and we, we bought it right on I-64. Yeah. And those trucks rolling down that place just drove me crazy. Every night. And every morning at 3 o'clock, we were waiting. Oh. <laughs> you know, and, and we were probably... 1,100 feet, our house from the, uh, from the thing. So the noise would bother us, but I haven't really heard many people complain. Of course, you heard our story about the, the people that bought closest to the turnpike that want some kind of wall yeah, or sound that would barrier. Be amazing if they erected. Could do that. Some yeah. kind of wall and big, big sound barrier. But I think the home sales and the, the, list, the more listings down in that area are probably people wanting to make a profit. Mm -hmm. But how do I know? We don't know. This is from Nancy and Mike from Massachusetts. Curious on what happens in the villages when health-wise you cannot jump in a golf cart or car or get to get your mail. Are there weekly services available for elder service to secure your mail like weekly? We stopped at our mail station and asked our little mail, mail girl there and- um, Mail girl. Mail girl, well, okay. Uh, we, <laughs> and 
she was so kind, but she said there is really no rules on that, and that most people come and get their mail, or if you're sick, then usually your neighbor would come do it for you, or you can get someone to take care of that for you. So occasionally, maybe on a very... Um, what, what do I want to say? Well, if you get a super nice male yeah. person that knows that you need help, yeah. they might help you out, but it's not anything they have to do or are expected mm -hmm. to do, or you can count on them to do. Mm -hmm. So you get a neighbor, get somebody, get a friend, yeah. pick it up. Matt from Wisconsin writes, I've watched all your episodes of Mailbag Monday and wonder if you're pleased with the roll-up sides on your golf carts, mm -hmm. or if you wished you'd invested in the hard side and closed doors. Great question. Yeah. I went out and looked at some. I wanted to show you the difference. I felt bad about this little uh, episode that I did because the first lady that I went up to was so nice. Yeah. And she gave me a little tour of her golf cart. And um, I guess I didn't hit record on the, on the recorder. Rock, rock. And I didn't get her. Mm -hmm. And so she thinks she's going to be on Mailbag Monday. And, and you're not. I'm sorry about that. You can see these pictures are of some folks that did show us their golf carts. Those hard doors will close it up and you can take advantage of your heating in the winter and your air conditioning if you have one. In the summer, very few golf carts have actual air conditioning. This is a Yamaha golf cart with a bench seat. Still has the plexiglass or the, uh, the plastic back in it there but boy it's got nice view all the way around you've got glass on all the corners yeah. Yeah. you can see out really well yeah i think linda would like this would we have it i don't think so uh, i don't really like the way some of them open they go out and then back and of course the one had velcro that held the door you heard that um I think they'd be hot with the doors closed in the summertime. Yeah, in the summertime for sure, unless they have air conditioning in there. But right now, when the temperatures yeah. are in the 40s, yeah. you know, if you're out at, after dark or around dusk and you've got to ride that cart home. Yeah, woo, it is chilly. It is chilly. But one of those would be really nice. Mm -hmm. That's called a Curtis cab on some of them. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the others are called, but those sliding doors. Yeah. And, and for a big boy, you know. I feel trapped in there. I don't know. You've got, you've got to, I, want, I need all the room to get in and out. I can. <laughs> Both of our carts have these sunbrella enclosures. On rainy days, we'll put it down. On particularly chilly days, we'll put them down too. Putting them down is quick. It probably takes two minutes at the most. Putting them up is a little longer. I'll show you. from Frank from Fort Knox, Kentucky. In your opinion, are the villages good fit for a single man in his 60s? Thank you and have a blessed day. By the way, Frank, we've been to Fort Knox many, many, many yes. times. We've gone up and uh, looked at that gold depository of taking yes. tours of Fort Knox mm -hmm. down there with school children. Yeah. And it's we have a neat. nice museum too. Oh, they? the Patton Museum's Patton down there. Museum. It's fantastic. Very Love good. it. Love it. Very and Frank, we're sorry for your loss. Frank lost his wife. And he's wondering about life for a single man in his 60s. I say it's just like everywhere else, only you're going to have, it's easier to talk to people here. Yes. So if you're a people person, 
you know, there are lots of clubs to go to, lots of rec centers, lots of uh, nightly music to join in. If you're a people person, you like people, you want to join in, you want to meet people, you're going to have a chance down here. Yeah. This is from Jay. Those pesky frogs are making a mess on my vinyl siding. Peppermint doesn't seem to work, so I'm just wondering if you found anything that works to repel them. Said his honey won't let him do what he wants to do. What? He wants to, he wants to kill the frogs. Kill them. Oh. I'm glad you don't kill them. Those little, no. those little tree frogs are so neat. I they got love little... to hear those guys. <laughs> but yeah. we, don't, we don't have any idea. We don't have a problem with frogs here. We, we have a stucco house. Maybe it's a vinyl house that, mm -hmm. that has that problem. But we no, we don't. Although on your lawn furniture out front, out back, yeah. you find lots of little nuggets on there. Yeah. Yes. Looks like yeah. grains of rice. I think it's uh, I think it's lizard poop. <laughs> we got we have or maybe it's frog. I don't know. But at night, if you go out after dark, take a light with you and you shine it on your house, you can see little geckos. Yes. They do walk around on your house. Yes. They're cute. Yeah, they are. They're really cute. So it's, they're no big deal. What is a big deal though? What's that? Oh, a lizard got in our house last week. <laughs> Yes. And he got, we have, we have a motorized shades. We love them. Absolutely love them. He got on there and he got rolled up. Yep. And he squished. Yep. He squished. And now our white shade has lizard squish on it. If you know how we can get that off, Please we would us. be totally indebted to you if you could tell yes. us. We have tried OxyClean. Mm -hmm. We've tried Dawn soap and water. It's we don't want to get too crazy because we don't want to make a you yeah. know a bleach spot on a on a white curtain, yeah. but we got to get that off. But it, you know he gave his life for this little escapade, <laughs> but evidently he rolled up and and it, he popped. So it's a it's a. Ugh. Did you ever notice, you know those things where you say I was today old when I found out <laughs> this. I just realized something. We watch TV. You watch TV. Everybody does. You see commercials. I've been on this earth a long time and I have never seen a commercial for a microwave. Have you? No. Have you ever seen one for a microwave? But you know, most of the commercials nowadays don't do appliances. I don't see washers or dryers or refrigerator commercials or any of those. Most things are electronic games or toys or uh, products to, to, to eat. Fritos, Lay's, potato chips, and stuff like mm. that. So I'm not sure about why they don't do um, appliances in microwaves. Yeah. Well, they do do appliances. I've seen washers and, okay. and dryers. And, I'm going to have to pay more attention to the commercials. <laughs> but I've never seen a microwave. Yeah. It's just odd. I don't yeah. know why I tell you that. You know, uh, he wakes up in the middle of the night thinking these things, and all of a sudden, i got to write that down. <laughs> I, don't, I haven't seen a microwave commercial. <laughs> Rod from Milwaukee says... I know the villages is not a tropical place. I know there are palm trees there, but I've heard that some palm trees can't live there. Can you tell us what type of palm tree that we can plant, mm -hmm. or better yet, what kind we should not plant? I, I mean, I'm not an arborist. Mm -hmm. Is that the right word? I think so. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but I have learned since we've been here. First of all, I learned that all the palm trees that you see in the villages were brought here and planted. They weren't natural. Mm -mm. Um, and therefore, this zone that we live in here does get into the 30s a couple of times a year, which is fatal to lots of palm trees. Mm. Now, we've got palm trees, and we are seriously contemplating removing the two biggest palm trees we have. We are thinking about it. They are called Washingtonias. They're the ones, if you watch Miami Vice and they show you a scene with giant, giant. The tallest ones. That's what they are. Yeah. These are going to get so big, they look funny next to our house someday. Right now, they look pretty good. But they're also the kind to get that skirt that hangs down. Right. And after the hurricanes recently, mm -hmm. that was the type of tree that left debris over the villages. Yes, they did. Except our yard. So we're thinking about getting rid of them. Plus, they have a littler pod than the queen palm, but a pod still that pops open with little things like cherries like, that this. fall everywhere all over your driveway. Yeah. And so anyway, we're thinking about taking those out. I know it seems like a crime and the house is going to look way different, but we'll put something back in there. Yeah. And we'll do research at that time to see what. 
Robolini, one of our favorite kind of yeah. palm trees. Beautiful. When you come to the villages, you'll see lots of palm trees that have multiple trunks, smaller trees, maybe eight yeah. feet tall with three trunks. Ours has five trunks. Yes, it does. And they're gorgeous, and they got little thorns all over them. We love them, though. <laughs> but you're supposed to cover them up on a, on a frosty night. Yeah or it's harmful to them. And there are lots of palms like that that don't take the frost. Mm -hmm. So you'll just have to uh, do your research. Mm -hmm. You know, a queen palm does very well here. We've got a queen palm out front, just had a trim the other day. They took four more pods out of that thing. Huh. You, did, you weren't here. Yeah. One of those pods weighed about 80 pounds. Wow. In fact, it came crushing down, and I thought it was going to destroy our landscape lighting. Uh, it, and, uh, and this has to be done frequently, you know, maybe three times a year. So that's an expense. I'm thinking hard. We're going to, in fact, we're going to do a show on palm trees, and we're going to think hard about whether we want any palm trees. This is from Brad the Builder. I am a do-it-yourselfer. I like to do the repairs around my own home. Do you have any of the big box type of home improvement stores close to you in the villages? We, we have a Lowe's within maybe three miles. Mm -hmm. So we go to Lowe's mostly. There's a Home Depot. Right. It's a good 10 or 11 miles away. So it's much more difficult and busy traffic to get mm -hmm. to there. There's an Ace Hardware. Not really what you're talking about, but a good one about five miles yeah, away where people can really help you and advise you. They're very helpful at that Ace Hardware store. But you know where I told you there was a Lowe's three miles away? Right next to it, they're building a Home Depot. Yoo-hoo! So we're going to have that choice within three miles yeah, of our house. Nice. Neither one will be golf cart accessible. You have to take the car because they're on the other side of, mm -hmm. of a busy road that you can't take your golf cart on. Right. But it'll be nice to have a Home Depot so close. It'll be in the Brownwood area. The other Home Depot is up in the Spanish Springs area. Mm -hmm. I know you've done it before, but can you show us how much, if any, your regular bills have gone up? Um, at the end of this video, we're going to post a link to our expense video where you can see all of our expenses before. And that'll be handy for some of you. But as far as our bills today, I decided to show you the Villages Community Development District Utility Bill. It's on your screen right there. We get that once a month. That bill, if you look at it, will have your water base, your water use, your irrigation base, your irrigation use, sewer base, sewer use, your amenity fee, and your sanitation fee. Now that's your garbage pickup. So all those come every month. That has gone up. When we first got here, this entire bill totaled around $230. This month, it's $283. Of course, that's, a, that's not bad. Uh, that has our water, our drinking water, and our irrigation water on it. You can see, if you look at that, uh, you can see how it all breaks down. The amenity fee, $183.94 for us. That's per house, not per person. It's the same for... Uh, I would say it's the same for everybody, but that's not really true. It depends when you bought your house, but they're on the same scale. Everybody's amenity fee is basically comparable, but ours is $184 basically. And you can see this chart of water usage. The taller one is the irrigation water. The shorter one is the home drinking water. And um, it said there's been a rate increase this month, two and a half percent on the water, sewer and irrigation. So that's an idea of what we pay each month. And remember, at the end of the video, I'll show you that link if you want to see all of our expenses, and uh, you can check it out. That question was from Sharon and Ed, Ed from Oxford, Ohio. They're trying to see if they can make it work. And we totally recommend that you do that. You figure out all the expenses as best you can. You're never going to get it 100% but then make, an, you know, make a judgment whether you can handle it or not. One thing to remember, your bills are going to be bills no matter where you live. You're always going to have a water bill. You're always going to have a sewer bill. We didn't, though, did we? No, we didn't. We, we had, had a septic, had tank. A septic tank. But there are, are, are going to, you're going to have an electric bill. You you're know? going to have taxes. You're going to have taxes. You're going to, some things are going to be the same. You're going to have to buy groceries. You're going to have to buy gasoline. Yeah. So you, you should look at the bills that are unique to the villages only, like the amenity fee. The bonds. And, and a, a bond payment if you, if you have one, which we don't. 
Yeah. But uh, yeah, make your good comparison. Mm -hmm. All right, let's part the Red Sea here a little bit. <laughs> and here's Gizzy, he's, sl hey. he's sleeping. Hey. I hate to wake you up, but you know what time it is, don't you? <laughs> it's time for your segment, take it away. Jump into that store. You know the one, the one that sells only donuts and bagels. What's it called? Um. Oh yeah, yeah. It's Whole Foods. Get it? Whole Foods donuts, bagels. <laughs> Why did the meatballs tell the spaghetti to go to sleep? It was pasta bedtime. Pasta bedtime. <laughs> hey, you know how to put a baby astronaut to sleep? You rock it. You rock it to sleep. <laughs> oh, well, they all can't be winners. Thanks for the jokes, everybody. See you next week. All right. Good job, partner. You did it again. We appreciate you. <laughs> Funny little dude. <laughs> That's going to do it for this week's edition of... Mailbag Monday. If you liked our video today, please press that like and subscribe button and share it with all your friends. Yeah, and right there is the link to that video I told you about expenses. Mm -hmm. Until next time. See you when you get here.